In the ocean, there's a vast number of strange fish who are unique and interesting. But today, let's take a look at the fish that generate electricity. We can split them up into two categories. Those who can generate their own electricity, and those who can detect it. Normally, those who can generate electricity can also detect it, an ability called electroreception. This biological trait allows fish to obtain and use electrical impulses. But not all fish who have the ability to detect electricity are considered electric fish. In order to earn the title of electric fish, the following criteria has to be met. Have the ability to create your own electric field. That's it. As far as we know, there are about 350 different categories of electric fish, which are split into two groups, the weakly electric fish and the strongly electric fish. But how do they generate electricity? And how much electricity can they generate? In order for these fish to be able to generate their own electricity, they take advantage of an electrical organ that resembles human muscle. So how come we're not fighting crime with our own special electrical powers? Unlike the muscles in our body, the muscles in these fish have stacks of cells called electrocytes. Hundreds and even thousands of these cells are constantly releasing positive ions of potassium and sodium which maintains the outside of the cell positively charged and keeps the inside negatively charged. This electrical organ is controlled by the brain that has the ability to instantly send a signal to invert the flow of potassium and sodium. In other words, the brain tells the electrical cells to begin taking in the potassium and sodium instead of releasing it. This leaves the cells with one face negatively charged on the outside and positively charged inside. And the other face of the electrocyte positively charged on the outside and negatively charged on the inside. These alternating charges allow for the current to pass by. What makes this process very effective is that the signals sent by the brain all arrive to the stacks of electrocytes at the same time, which allows for all the charges to combine and simultaneously release, very much like a circuit of batteries connected in series. Discharges of low voltage help the fish navigate the surroundings, detect other fish nearby, and even figure out if a buried insect is alive. The discharges of high voltage are reserved for hunt and prey, and for protecting itself from becoming lunch. There is a big difference between the weakly electric fish and strongly electric fish, and that being their electrical organ. The strongly electric fish have an electrical organ that covers large parts of their body, while the weakly electric fish have electric organs in only certain regions of their body. The weakly electric fish can generate anywhere from 1 volt to 1.2 volts of electricity, or approximately the equivalent of one AA battery. On the other hand, the strongly electric fish can generate anywhere from 500 to 600 volts which they use to communicate, defend, and navigate their surroundings. As always, thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, smash the subscribe button. Mind Motion out.